the way that we have been using oil is harming our planet. And as a chemical engineer, I think we have an ethical responsibility towards fixing that problem. Welcome to my office. The chemical industry is one of the three biggest industrial sectors that contributes emissions that cause climate change. And it's one of the hardest sectors to decarbonize because the chemical industry grew out of the oil industry. So from oil, we not only had the feedstocks that are used to make our chemicals, but we also had the energy feedstocks. So we could take oil, burn it down, and generate heat that can then run our chemical plants to manufacture chemicals. And because of that, it is very hard to decouple fossil fuel as an energy source to manufacture chemicals from the manufacture of these chemicals per se. And because of this, it's a challenging problem, but it's a problem that also has a very big impact in society. My research group works in approaches that involve using electricity to make the chemicals that we use in our daily life. These are things that eventually make it into plastics like polyethylene, poly, polypropylene, which currently they're, they're manufactured using methods that rely on heat that comes from fossil fuel combustion. So what my group is trying to do differently is we're trying to use electricity directly to manufacture these materials. It is a very challenging problem to solve because the decarbonization of the chemical manufacturing will rely on decarbonizing tens of thousands of chemical processes that occur distributed all around the planet. All of these processes, again, rely on the use of combustion of fossil fuels to generate heat. And they, they require different conditions and they require different inputs. And because of the fact that oil is tied to the chemical industry, both as an energy source, but also as a feedstock that gets transformed into the materials, this interconnection is very difficult to decouple. So we use electrochemistry, we bring electrons directly to a chemical reaction, and then there is a direct connection between an electrical current and a reaction rate. This is not how we currently make chemicals, uh, but it's a way that will allow us to then integrate clean electricity from renewable sources with chemical manufacturing in a way that we have never been able to integrate before. The chemical industry contributes more than 7% of all of the CO2 emissions in the world. And getting rid of these emissions is very, very challenging. But the way that we're going around this is that we're leveraging clean electricity coming either from solar cells, wind, nuclear power, or hydroelectrical power, and integrating this directly into chemical plants so we can avoid emissions that come from the combustion of fossil fuels that are used to manufacture chemicals. My research group have been doing work on the manufacture of chemicals that lead to the production of nylon 6.6. So nylon 6 is this wonderful material that you use in your jackets that we use to manufacture car parts. That is one of the highest performing plastics that we have in society. But now we have expanded this approach to, for example, take materials that may come from food waste to make plastics like polyethylene or polypropylene, which we commonly find in milk jugs or water bottles. What I like about this slide is that it shows you the complexity and interconnectivity of chemical manufacturing. Every single one of these words that you see here are different chemicals that are produced in petrochemical plants. So we usually take oil and gas, but we also can think about taking biomass waste from agriculture, from food waste, as a, as a starting material to make the whole range of chemicals. We make more than 70,000 chemicals in the world all across different sectors. The largest ones are the ones that we currently produce in petrochemical plants. We usually start with simple molecules like ethylene or prop propylene, which are the building blocks of the main plastics. But we then substitute them and modify them into a whole range of different chemicals that have different functionalities that eventually make different materials that are perhaps more strong, they can be perhaps fire retardants, uh, they might have different functionalities. And we have also started to look into electrochemical pathways to purify products that come out of reactors, in particular for the production of ethylene and propylene. And that separation process that, that is used for ethylene and propylene is the largest separation process in industry. It used 2% of the overall energy in industry, only one process out of the 70,000. 
But one way to accelerate our work is to accelerate the research that we do. So what my group is currently doing is we're working on high throughput methods that will allow us to go from being able to do three or four experiments per day to do hundreds of experiments per day. We can then go to our friends in computer science that work on artificial intelligence or machine learning and then use that data and machine learning or artificial intelligence algorithms to then get insights that we couldn't get from the experiments themselves using traditional methods. Using machine learning, we can take these results and develop regression models that will allow us to then predict what might happen all across that cube, not only on the points that I run the experiments, but all across. And we might discover, and we have been discovering, points of operations that are outperform those points that we traditionally had drawn. We're trying to develop algorithms that will respond to changes inside of our reactants. So imagine that you're running your reactor, you have some reactants coming in, some feedstocks coming in, and the feedstocks change on you. Then the reactors could possibly sense that and then change the operation so that you're optimizing the operation for the right conditions to make the same products under optimal conditions at all times. So I'm Venezuelan myself. So Venezuela is or was one of the largest oil exporting countries in the world. I grew up around the oil industry. The same time that we had an oil industry, we had a petrochemical industry associated with it. So I grew up driving through oil fields or petrochemical plants and I always remember being fascinated. And that drove me towards chemical engineering. But I think we now know the way that we have been using oil is harming our planet. And as a chemical engineer, I think we have an ethical responsibility towards fixing that problem. At the same time, oil brought tremendous wealth not only to my country, but the overall world. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't because of oil and because of the chemical industry. As a researcher in this field, as a professor, I take that as my responsibility to change our industry so we can support the wealth generation that it had created, but at the same time, not necessarily destroying our planet. So when we look at the next 50 to 100 years of the industry, I hope that we can come up with an industry that is sustainable by design rather than what it had been uh, until now.